Convicted Christian community! Let's go. Welcome to another podcast. Man, really, really glad to have you guys around. We are post COVID lockdown. Yes. Pretty good. Yes, yes, sir. That is sir. Yes, sir. We out. And yeah. we are back stronger than ever. And we're so keen to get this episode started. Yeah. We're pretty slow on the listens. We're pretty slow on the listens. But you know what? We're going to keep pushing along. Because for those nine people that listen to us, right? <laughs> for those nine people that we found out today, one of them is myself. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and yes, I have been very encouraged myself listening to the podcast. So you know what? Yeah, nice. Purpose. Yeah. Build. Yo, yo, yo. That's it, man. That's it. That's it. That's hey, it. you've been watching the Olympics? No, I haven't. Have you? Dude, are you serious? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've been smashing the Olympics, man. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's nothing else to really do. Oh, damn, man. Really? Came, at a, came at a good time. What's you talking about? What's you, what you talking about? Well, listen, <laughs> I've been up to so many fun stuff on the. On have you? the yeah. The lockdown was great. I mean, Olympics is fun as well. Yeah. It's good yeah. fun. Yeah. You don't really enjoy the sports as much, hey? No, nah, you know what? I, I, I love playing. I don't really like yeah. watching. Man, dude, some of those athletes are just. Yeah. Talented man. Hmm. Yeah. A lot of appreciation for the time that put Did I hear that there's skateboarding? There is, yeah. There was, I think the, the people who won it was like a, a 12 year old kid. Wow. Won gold at the Olympics in skateboarding. That's, that's impressive. Is that like the youngest person that's ever won a Don't know. gold medal? Could be. Could be. Yeah. Could be. I heard they like rock up and like, like and they've yeah, got AirPods man. in there. Got, they got like baggy clothes on. Yeah. Like, Got the hat backwards. I wonder what the what the objective is. We had a bit of a discussion around that because well, I my re- initial response to that was I've got kids in the house, right, under eighteen years old. Yeah, teenagers. They're like, "Wow, that's epic. That's cool, dude. This is fun." And I'm looking at this and I'm like shaking my fist at. I mean, that's when I realize I'm old. <laughs> You're old. Yeah. I'm old. <laughs> I look and I just go, oh my! It's associated it's too with dangerous. Yeah, and it's like associated with bad things like graffiti's and oh, yeah, you yeah. know underage drugs and stuff like. <laughs> not that overage drugs is a good thing. Yeah, right? just drugs in general. Just drugs like, in general. Yeah, and like that causing havoc on down the streets. You know, like uh, I didn't think know. I didn't think it was a very good thing that you know they brought that in. Or I was like, and I was like analyzing, oh, they're trying to like put a better image around skateboarding as a sport or not, like blah blah blah. Whereas the kids are just like, hey, boomer, like, dude. Thank you. Hey, Boomer. Yeah. All right. Okay, Boomer. And I'm not even a Boomer. And here I'm thinking like, I what? think it's good that they had the Olympics, man. You reckon? Yeah, because it's because it's a stereotype around yeah. skateboarding, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, that's so it. Just trying to hopefully, get into hopefully that. it'll be like. Be good. Yeah. yeah, be be better adjusted, I guess. Convicted Christian community. This is the podcast with Christian topics. Yeah. Where we apply that into real lives. That's and it. try to live a life that's actually convicted for Christ. Convicted. If you haven't done so, make sure you go subscribe. Follow this podcast let's do it yeah yeah do you want to all right all right what's the topic for today the topic for today is how to go church shopping how to go church shopping exactly right you mean like i thought shopping for church clothes (laughs) (laughs) don't you just go to like uniqlo or you know somewhere hipster i mean depends on the church you go to right yeah exactly look i thought i'd bring this topic up because look it's post-covid well kind of post-covid people are having a lot more options with churches you know whether they do it online or they're sick of the old church that they used to go to Mm -hmm. whatever it is a season for a change and people are going you know let's choose a different church and i've been talking to so many of my friends who i knew from my old church and like i don't know like eight out of ten of my friends have decided to you know what Mm. flip the table i'm leaving yeah for whatever reason that they could pick up from their past of their experience, Mm. you know, from the church they go to. Found also that new people have come to that old church Mm -hmm. from other churches as well. Mm. So people are just, you know, shifting around a bit, shuffling around a bit. Where do you go to church? Do you go to the church that we used to go to? Yeah. You still still do? do. You're not checking out anything else? I have checked out other churches before, Mm but in the last couple of months, yeah. Oh, okay, fair enough. So, yeah, it's definitely on people's agenda. Yeah. Even people who are sticking around like yourself mm-hmm. are still, you know, looking sideways. And, you know, like our last week's episode, we're talking about online churches where you all of a sudden have this access to, like, every church in the world. Mm. The best ones to... Every church that has online. That, uh, yeah, yeah that, that has yeah. online, which is, you know... A lot of churches. A lot of churches. <laughs> and some really good churches, some really terrible ones too, mm-hmm. you know? But you don't even see them any because they only got like five views. Yeah. Like our podcast, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 oh, gosh. A bit of self-duplicating humor right there. When are we going to break into scene today? Oh, you know what? You can't ask for it. It's just got to come early. natural. Uh, a yeah, bit too early. A bit too early. early What's in that drink there you got? Well, <laughs> There's no drink. I'm pointing at an empty desk. 
So yeah, how to go church shopping? What what should we look for in a church? Mm -hmm. Can we say we look for a church? Mm. You know, all those things. I went to a bit of my story. I went to this new church, more Pentecostal. I love that kind of stuff, man. Yeah. I think that's already been established in this podcast. I went to this church and worked on this transition for about a year now. Mm. I was always this keen servant at the church, right? I was on music, sound desk, you know, welcoming. You're, you're the same. Mm -hmm. For about 16 years in my yeah. old church. And I go do this and like one year I just chilled out. Boy, was it relaxing. Yeah, right. Yeah. But then so many people started talking to me. Oh, no, you got to serve, man. You got you to serve the church, you know. Mm. I kind of put this mimicky voice. But you know what? They're right. Mm -hmm. You need to serve the church. So church shopping, similar to church hopping, mm. right? I got some friends that are going, you know, I go to two different churches. With, those guys worked on a transition a bit later than I did. Mm -hmm. And when I was working through a transition, I was trying different churches. They were the ones that sat me down and be like, hey, dude, you can't do this. Find a church, commit to it, be patient and serve the community, mm. right? And so this week was the first week I actually went there in a service role. At to, your At my new, new church, church that, right. that I've decided to settle into. Okay, yeah. Kind of regretting the decision to settle into it because I realized it's a you know, very sacrificial thing and it's a very <laughs> difficult thing. To, to serve. Yeah, to serve. <laughs> yeah. It's not as fun as it used to be anymore. Yeah. You know what? It's but not then, as easy as taking a back set. I know. <laughs> but going back into back, seat, back, back into the service is not a, not an easy thing. And, yeah. You know, it just sort of hit me back again. And I had the chat with my friend and I told him, hey, you need to settle down in a church and you need to commit. You can't keep hopping this around. How did he, how did he take that? And he's like, <laughs> and, he, and he laughed straight away because yeah. he knew. And I said, yeah. hey, We'll call him Steve because we like Steve, don't we? Yeah. I was, I was telling, hey, Steve. Hey, Steve. Remember when, when you told me this six months ago? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you just got to come in. Yeah. It made me realize and raise a bunch What did you What did you questions. do in terms of serving? Kids men. Youth men. Okay. Youth ministry. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. what you did on Friday. Yeah, yeah, that's what I did on Friday. How did you find it? Really interesting. Really different. Why, why kids men? Well, I kind of do that already now. Full time at home. And with your kids? Yeah, with my yep. boys. And I just thought I'd check it out because one of my boys actually went to their like recent youth camps and they found it so edifying, wonderful, all that kind of great stuff. Now, I did not realize how different youth ministry looked in a Pentecostal church versus a Reformed Anglican church that I used to go to. Okay. Yeah, it was very different. Yeah. You know, Reformed Anglican, it's like you have this together time, play a bit of games, whatever, and then you break up into smaller groups and then actually do Bible study and things like that. Mm -hmm. First of all, this session was really short. Okay. And it was post just coming out COVID as well. So it probably didn't have much focus on like the spiritual side of things. Mm. So it was just more focused around play. But then I also sensed that generally it was all more focused around play rather than actually, you know, getting your mind dirty with the words of the gospel, mm -hmm. right? Through Bible studies and small groups and things like that. And I'm like, okay, well, what's up? What's actually happening with that? I've decided to actually uh, keep going. And find out a bit more about like what's actually happening, not okay. to be too like, judgmental on you the mean, first time. The kids, kids, men. Yeah, kids, yeah, men. Yeah. Uh, the the youth <coughs> ministry, right? too judgmental on the first time around. What do they do for kids? Men? Literally got together at, like seven seven thirty, play basketball, and like there's all these games. There's like pool table out. There's a mm. bunch of other you know um, stand around games and whatever. And then like at eight o'clock came around, and then we all they had this quiz night, and the quiz night had three rounds first round was based around the camp that they've just been on the second and third round was just like general knowledge question people were just the kids were just participating they all had masks on it was hard to sort of yeah. connect with people like that yeah. and they were done nine o'clock finished and all the leaders actually drive them home okay all right. the leaders drive them home and then apparently that's the time where they like build a relationship or whatever like really? you know with each yeah. other and i'm just like mm, I, th I thought you'd be more intentional than that but anyway, that's what they did. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't go drive anyone, any kids home because I wasn't like a roster thing. There were like three people left over and we were like packing up the chairs and bringing it all back. Bro, that was a workout and a half. Putting all the chairs away? Yeah. And like they, <laughs> we're putting like, not only putting the chairs, like the basketball and all the set of the pool table. Yeah. Moving a pool table, bro. Like what the heck? Mm. And like this basketball, it was so heavy. And I'm just like, you do this every week. And they go, yeah. But it was done by like three people. There was like this girl who was like, which who I found out was like later 19 years old. Mm -hmm. And there was me and there was some other dude who probably was a bit less built than I was. And we just put the whole chairs out. And I was like some couple hundred chairs or something like crazy like that. Mm. And they weren't like light chairs. They were, these were like really good chairs as well. I'm yeah. just, 
maybe I'm just having a big sook, right? <laughs> Don't mind the workout. But then I also sense that these guys are, um, look, what I, remember what I said about not being too judgmental, yeah. but here's me judging. I, I, I realize why these people actually don't feel bad about driving kids home because that's their way of avoiding doing all this manual labor is what I sense. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, Maybe I'm being yeah. too judgmental here, but you know, yeah. that, that kind of justified it as well. Cause I was surprised when I was sending my kid to go to these programs, um, he'll come back, he'll get picked up and dropped off. And I'm like, wow, what a fantastic ministry. Little did I know, I know what they're, they're avoiding by doing that, yeah. which is like, you know, <laughs> all the heavy all labor, the heavy yeah. labor. <laughs> man. So like it gets packed up so that they had, so that they can make room for their kids. Mm. And then after they go, it gets reinstalled, which mm -hmm. I think is like, <gasps> so they only have like one main hall. So you know how we yep. used to go to church, before, like our old church, it has mm -hmm. like that hall for the youth program, which is just mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. big area. And that's the main church, whatever. They just yep. use the same place. And I'm like, wow. And everyone there was just like so normal with it. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is just the way Did we you know there's so many churches that do that, man? Do that, well, yeah. Sense. All man. those people who put those chairs away, man. God bless you. I think Case got your love. <laughs> I no, you really do. You know, I, I might be sitting here judging people, but seriously, man, like I've I and I've just like. Do you imagine those big sound systems and stuff like that having to carry all that? Well, they I think they have it pretty permanent there, so that's yeah. that's all right. But some churches don't. Don't. Even know. Yeah. Carry. Just like, just like you know, mm -hmm. don't go to a gym. Just go to a church. Yeah, that's with it. limited facilities. Then two you, birds, one stone. Exactly right get fed by the spirit and oh my god anyway enough yeah. of my enough of my crappy story right what i want to talk about is basically what should you look for in a new church obviously there are differences right i'm in my little single you know person experience i'm seeing the difference in the in the sects right so you know reformed anglican they are more intentional about the bible study side of things with this with the pentecostal churches they're more i guess liberal and they just have focus more on play and coming together right we have also, I've plugged myself into the youth ministry, but there'll be other people that plugs into different other ministries as well. Yep. Could be yep. music, could be, I don't know what other ministries there are. I mean, there's like there's like food and hospitality, welcoming. There'll mm -hmm. be different types out there. A whole right? bunch of different yeah, things. And yeah. they would experience different things than I do, right? Yeah. Um, the community itself is different, right? The way we form friendships, right? The, the right. kind of topics were different as well. Mm -hmm. Like the type of songs that people overtly like is also different too. Yeah. Mm. What about what about preaching style, right? And and they're all they're all going to be different. So we we look for these things. But when we look for these things, then are we creating a selfish wish list of what we want? And then what are then selfless wish lists that we should have? Do you think people look for those things when they go to a church? Maybe I'm being too analytical. I feel like yeah. But you know, I feel what? like there's quite a lot of people who just go to a church, and the thing that keeps them going mm. is if they've built friendships there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I, 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 there's Different people. I think there are quite a few people like you as well yep. that would, you know, really want to know what they get involved in. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Kind of like if you joined a, a sports team or a workplace, mm. you don't just blatantly go there and just like, oh, actually, I just like the people here. Like you're like, oh, well, you don't want to know, you know, what business they're doing, like what's their management style, leadership, blah, blah, blah. Mm. So I think there are some people like this, but do you know, I reckon there's some people who just go to church and just like, well, you know what? Steve when came and had a chat to me, man. Like, yeah, Steve's a nice guy. I might go go again. And then tch, 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 six months later, they're like actually plugged into that church. Mm. But for the ones who actually do analyze it, what were the what were some of the things you mentioned? Okay, preaching style. Well, no, I no. You know what? I think you nailed the head, the head on nail, nail <laughs> head. <laughs> you hit the nail on the head with that. Yes, God bless me with <laughs> words today, with that, with friendship. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I'm kind of doing this to make friends. Mm. Right. You mean youth? You're yeah. Youth. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I've served the youth and there's other leaders there as well. Just make some mm. friends. Yeah. That's hopefully what I'm trying to get I at. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a really good thing. Yeah. Because you need to have friendships to be involved in anything. You know what I mean? Like, why would you keep rocking up to the same place on a Sunday every week if you don't know anyone there? You know what I mean? Exactly. The alternative of making friends is by joining like your age group group, right? right. Your your background group, right? Your workers, yeah. university ministry, mm. whatever, home groups, whatever. Yep. But the issue there is like you are just one of many. Mm -hmm. You've got to rock up yep. to it for a long time, and, you know, whatever. But then for me to actually build friendships with these people, I got to actually be part of a cause, especially when you're serving. Either way, like let's talk about, for example, sex, right? For us, no, no, sex, 
Pentecostal, you know, I think it's very character dependent, right? Yeah. Yeah. What are you laughing at? I thought you said sex. <laughs> sex. No, let's let's talk about denominations. Denominations. Yeah, Sorry. Be... Oh my gosh, that's sex. the right word. <laughs> let's talk. It's got so many evil. We're going to talk about sex. So we. <laughs> we we'll, we'll talk about we we'll talk about denominations, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm, I'm following. Mm. Yeah. Is a preference over a denomination a sinful thing? No. Why not? Tell me. Because I think every uh, Christian naturally tends to lean towards characteristics that are comfortable for them. Mm, okay. You know, mm. so Baptists are, you know, going to go to churches that are Baptists. There's certain secondary gospel issues that mm. I think are really important to people as well. Mm. You know what I mean? So like child, like infant baptism, stuff with the spirit and all that, mm. that you, you, you probably want to be around people that somewhat view the same things as you. Okay. Right? I don't think any of those things inherently make you, you know, godly or ungodly. Mm. Actually, you know, that, <laughs> maybe that's a conversation for another time. Mm. Uh, is like, you know, the secondary issues, are they, what are secondary issues? What are primary gospel issues? Yeah. But I don't think it's bad, man. You know, Pentecostals, like, as, as you mentioned, church you go to, mm. are probably going to go to a place where the worship is a bit popping. Mm. You know, if they went into a place where it was just really reformed and, you know, hands by your side, don't even lift it above your waist or you're, you're out. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like, of course, what's wrong with that? Mm. You've got to go to a place that you're vibing yep. with God. Mm. You know I mean? The worst thing you could do is like you go to a place, that force yourself into a place that you don't engage with mm. the spirit mm. when you're there. Mm. You know what I mean? mm. And it becomes frustrating. It becomes bitter. You mm. become bitter with people and with God. So, yeah. so I think denominations is okay. Mm. And when you're looking for a church shopping tick, yeah, but I'd say that's a, an important thing to look for. Mm -hmm. But don't put too much emphasis on needing that very specific type of denomination, mm. you know? And we can both attest to that because we've been into very different sects, as you like to say, <laughs> <laughs> denominations, where you've gone into a reformed Anglican. Mm. That's, I'd say it's, it's evangelical Ang Anglican. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that, yeah, that's what yeah. I meant to say. Evangelical Anglican mm -hmm. to a charismatic Pente Church, whereas I've gone, grown up in a charismatic Pente Church, now going to an evangelical Anglican. Yeah. Know? So we kind of done like a yeah. Freaky Friday swap. Yeah. <laughs> in terms of yeah. like in types of churches we're going to. The sex exchange program. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you know we've been in very different environments. Yeah. So and it's really weird, right? Because most people in our situation, if you went to a charismatic penty, you'd just go to another charismatic penty church. Mm. Or if you went to an Anglican church, you'd just go to another Anglican church. Mm. But we've kind of pushed ourselves a little bit outside of the norm for yeah. us. Yeah. And we've survived, yeah. I'd, I'd say. Uh, you know I, mean? I guess was so. Was it the worst thing that we went to another? <laughs> well, I, I think you've survived, but I, I, I don't know. I, I'm having a... <laughs> oh, here we go. To be honest, I'm having a bit of an identity crisis. Yeah. yeah. It looks like, like it, mate. It, I mean, you can't even speak normally today. I know. Like, I'm... <laughs> I'm talking about sex in a Christian podcast <laughs> and like, it just doesn't make any sense. What is going on? Are you all there? Uh, who am I? What's my name? Yeah. Uh, look, I, I'm not even kidding, bro. Like I was, I think I am having a bit of an identity crisis. Oh man, this is, yeah. You're being serious. Yeah. So. Be you shouldn't be laughing. So. <laughs> yeah. No, it's okay. What's, what's wrong? I've, I've laughed at much worse. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like I was having an identity crisis for 16 years being being a closet penty in a evangelical Anglican. <laughs> and then now I'm here and I'm still having a crisis because I'm like sitting there going like, like Whoa. what's going on? What's the meaning of this? Right. And I'm, yeah. so I'm like the most Pentecostal person in a, in an evangelical Anglican church. Yeah. And I'm the most evangelical Anglican person in a Pentecostal well, church. What? Yeah. Well, what, why what am you, I so weird like that? What are you finding hard about being at a penty church? All the all the same stuff that uh, that uh, that uh, that, uh, an Anglican, that Anglican yep, like yep. Uh, that uh, that's a very diplomatic way yeah. to put it, and I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> would have, yeah, yeah, would right? have. You're gonna piss but, off all that penty, even. but not to an extent. <laughs> not to an extent, they'll be like, "Be gone from me, Pentecostals." Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? You're like, I'm still like they're having a good time. Five minutes. Do stuff, you, know you know why? Yeah, you're like that. Why? Because you grew up. Yeah. In an Anglican church. Do you know what I mean? So everything inherently... Stop, stop just... Oh, we're just we're smashing his identity. Stop smashing that into <laughs> me, man. I'm trying to... to ah! But it is though, right? Like, yeah. you are going to find it so hard to see, like, a group of people... Yeah. Uh, ...experiencing God... Yeah. ...in a different way. Yeah. Because you grew up in that. Do you know what I mean? 
So yeah. for me, I can kind of understand that in a sense that I, I appreciate the evangelical, evangelical Anglican church we went to mm. because they weren't so reformed. Mm. If I went to a reform, I've, I've been to a few, you know, reformed churches, not just Anglican, but very traditional churches. Mm. And I, I struggle. Yeah. I really struggle. Uh. So thankfully the one we went to wasn't too reformed, mm. but yeah, man, I, I, I would say I've, had somewhat of an identity crisis in my spiritual walk as well. Mm-hmm. Because the biggest difference is, man, for me, like, for example, and I still find it really hard, mm. is a worship. Mm. Why is a worship in Anglican churches so different? Oh, come to on, say it. To Pentecost. Say it as it is, pretty bad. It sucks. It yeah, sucks. 100, yeah. 100%. I, I would go as far to say as, like, I think the way that we worship at the church that we used to go to mm. is backwards in faith. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because come on, man. Do you right. really think people there are actually going to understand and experience God? Mm. They've got such a thing of like, oh, I don't want to have an emotional experience mm. because that's bad. Yeah. Why is that bad? Yeah. Right? Mm. I'm not saying only have emotional experience. Of course, yeah. So to my to my Penty brothers and sisters out there, mm. you know, be careful with how much you're desiring to have that emotional experience. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, you know, the drums drum beat's got to be on point, the smoke machine's got to go off, you know, the strobe light's got to be on. I've got to really feel this. It's like, no, God is always there. Mm. You don't get closer to God. Mm. You need to have faith. God is already there. Spirit is already there. Amen. Right? Amen. But having a, a emotional experience is not a bad thing. Mm. How many people, to my Anglican brothers and sisters out there, or to my traditional brothers and sisters out there, how many times do you look in the Old Testament and you see no emotion? Come on. Mm. You're telling me David didn't have emotion? Mm. When you see that he's singing, I always tell people this. Psalms, sh- Psalms show us, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel shows us, David singing and dancing down the street. Mm. What do you think he was doing by that? Do you actually visualize that? Mm. Do you think he was just walking and was just singing a song with his hands by his side? Mm. No. When you go to a party and you're dancing to your favorite tune, mm. you know, mm. it could be like a, a top 40 right now. It could mm. be like an 80s classic, mm. you're really bopping to it. Mm. But suddenly you think if you go to church on a Sunday, mm. oh, I can't have that experience because that's only emotional. Mm. That's that's you. We're mm. made as emotional beings, mm. right? Mm. So when I, when I challenge people on this, I'm like, if you can dance the night away mm. when you're at a 21st or at a wedding, mm. yet when you come to church, you don't have any experience of God. It's like, what is wrong with you? Mm. Do you really think David was just only singing and dancing but then when he came to God, and it t- says us in the Bible that he was singing and dancing, was actually, no, he was just standing there mm. solidly. It's like, nah, come on. Well, he lost his pants in a, in a plaza. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that? Yeah. His pants fell down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he yeah. danced too much. He's had some funny stories, man, David. Definitely. But he's a, he's a trooper, man. He, mm. I want to be more like David in my life, mm. in the way that he, he interacts with God. Mm. You know, even in the times when he's when he sinned, mm. And he's screaming so much, he's just wearing a sackcloth mm. and hasn't eaten for months mm. because he knows his spirit is grieving. Man, I want to be more like David. I want to be more like David in a way that I appreciate God. Mm. So I really had a crisis, man, mm. when I first came to, to this new church because it was from two really different uh, denominations. Mm. But I'm also learning how do I come to God. Mm. which is going to be very different to you, mm. you know what I mean? It's going to be very different to Steve. It's mm. going to be very different to any other person. How do I come to God fully well in him? Mm. And I, I I really struggled anyway when I was in a charismatic church mm. with the really emotional um, worship. Mm. Like that actually kind of affected my, my spirit in some mm. ways. Mm-mm. But as I've gotten older, I think I've, I've known what it looks like for me to worship God. Mm. When it comes to sung, singing, worship, yeah. What I find really hard though is ex- like expressing that when no one else around you is doing, is it. doing it. Yeah. So I find that really hard mm. in the church that I'm in. Yes. So that's where for me it's like if you looking at a denomination, there are some pros and cons to it. Mm. But if you find it really hard to express truly your you know worship of God, mm. whether it be singing worship, whether it be the preaching, you know. Or this and that, then it's okay to just stay at a similar denomination. Do you know? I agree. Worst thing is not going to church and then being tempted yeah. <laughs> by, by 
by the devil. Exactly right. The thing about that identity crisis yeah. is that I'm not the only one going through it. I just realized. Mm, mm. And that's what takes time for people to adjust and, and you know, it takes time for people to transition. Yeah, for sure. And the most difficult thing about transition is that you get so comfortable in that transition phase. You, you, yeah. you get so comfortable being that nobody in a church. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and, you, and it's not just becoming a nobody in the church, but you also kind of become a nobody to God as well. Yeah. In a way. Mm. You get, at least you make yourself feel that way. I feel like this episode's really cathartic of, your situation right now. Hey? Oh my gosh. <laughs> you dug a hole in saying you wanted to talk about this, yeah. this topic. But, you know, I really love what you just said there, man, because I, I don't want to say it. You know, I've known you for years. You know, there's a lot of other brothers and, and sisters out there that know known you for ages. Mm. But I think we were kind of concerned for you because you're going through a period where you weren't really involved, you know, in a particular church, in a sense, like call that your home church mm. for for some time. Mm. And I think, you know, you can probably reflect on your life and stuff. Mm. Anyone who's in that situation, it's really hard because you don't have a community around you, right? Well, let me, let me correction. It's really easy. Okay. Yeah. That's the point I'm trying to drive here, right? It's actually really easy. It's easy not having to get up and go serve the church for the whole Sunday. It's easy, bro. It's like, it's like, it's like gone to the gym for 16 years and not for a whole year. And now having to go back into the gym again. (laughs) Just as a like, yeah, just small. as a really fat person, right? Like, yeah, that's kind of how it feels like, man. And I just want to, yeah, just tell everyone be careful of the transition. Mm. Yeah, you got to have your list ticked. And, you know, we talk about denominations and what we like and stuff like that. But I had to really cut myself down yesterday because mm. what I've also noticed that these people had different education levels as I do, right? Right. They Probably have from different cultural backgrounds. Yeah, race. Yeah. Oh, that's the, on my list right now. Race and culture, yeah. different financial status, mm-hmm. different timelines. Bloody yeah. hell! Since when did Pentecostal have so much energy? We were hanging out until twelve o'clock last night. Not even kidding. We finished yeah, at right. eleven, and they're like, "Yo, let's go hang out." I was like, "Pentecostals, man, they they, they just got energy. They hangs. They got yeah. energy, man." Right, right that man. And that's yeah, cool. well, yeah, between and, and like the people serving were between the ages of nineteen and thirty. Okay, so yeah. it wasn't just young people. No, and. And I was just like, dang, like, we hangs. That sounds cool, man. I know, but you know that what? That sounds cool. <laughs> I was I was getting exhausted towards the end. Yeah. I don't yeah. normally be, I'm normally not the guy that was exhausted towards the end. But, you know, I probably pulled out the most number of chairs that day uh, <laughs> than out of anybody else. Um, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Do you see how much jacked I am compared yeah, to dude, when you last saw me? Yeah. I feel like you've put on about five kilos of muscle, man. Yeah, exactly, bro. Pentecostal churches do that for you, mate. <laughs> gym membership. Put your gym membership fee yeah. and tithe it to do, give <laughs> so it as an offering to a Pentecostal church. church. <laughs> you'll, get this, you'll get the same if not better results, bro. Well, it's a right? church that like, needs you to put chairs out. With know? limited yeah, facilities. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. And I was There's just so like... so many pastors that are just thanking you right now. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Man, like, wow, well, I was moving this, like, billiard ta- pool table, right? It had one of the legs broken. Oh, it's an absolute female dog to move that thing. <laughs> Bro. And I was I was literally this close to just, yeah. like, reaching into my pockets, pulling out some cash and just, like, giving to him. But, like, guys, get a new pool table. This is <laughs> yeah. so difficult just to move. take it, destroy, destroy it. Destroy it. Destroy it. Just get a new <laughs> Do you guys not tithe enough in this church? Come on. <laughs> I actually kind of said that out loud. Some people laughed. Yeah. Yeah. Some people probably judge me. Yeah. But that's how I keep the close ones closer. Yeah, right. And not if they like, can put up with all yeah, your... Yeah, if they can put up with my... Your mess. My mess. <laughs> but yeah, but I was constantly cutting myself down. And I, go, I was telling myself, yeah, okay, this is this is a place of service. Mm-hmm. Don't flex your money. Don't flex your, you know, intelligence. Don't flex your enormous, yeah. intel- you know, your, your knowledge about God. Don't do that. At the end of the day, they don't take you into heaven. heaven okay, like just... Go and serve. Just go and move these chairs. Just move these chairs. Do as you're told. Just move these chairs. Yeah. But, you know, it was Friday night. I have a ministry at home as well. And I look after my mum. I look after my boys. Mm. My mum finishes especially late on Friday nights. And I need to make sure that there's nothing wrong with her transition from work to home. She doesn't yep. drive. She yep. rides a bike. It's a short distance, but I just got to make sure that it's all happening. Mm. If it rains or if it's too cold or something she like that. She rides a bike every yep, day. Every day. Wow. Uh, that's how she stays young and fit. Yeah. So I go, okay, well, you know, I need to make sure that I, she's she's all safe and nothing's happening. We've had a couple of occasions where she was like robbed so late at night. She was. Yeah, on where she works. I mean, yeah, she works in the city. So yeah, I yeah. understand you, 
so like I've been called out during my like off time, like when I'm even out having dinner with my friends because it's a mm. Friday. And I've been called and cut short and I had to leave many times, right? Mm. While I was serving, I received like five calls from each of the boys. Mm-hmm. One of the boys telling me that they made it home. Two other boys letting me know that they're half an hour away from home and then they are home. Okay. Because they come home, they don't see me, they, they look for me. Yeah. Obviously, like, got to sort out dinner and stuff for the boys. Not that I'm cooking for them, but at least we have time to go out and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, like, got to make sure that they're fed. They're fed. You know? Well, but like, not only boys. not only fed, but like, have that time with me so that we talk about their life and their okay. week during. Yeah, yeah. Over. Well, you do prioritize that. You know? Well, I feel like I should, and like Friday yeah. nights where all of that sort of come together. So it starts right. off by, "Hey guys, what are you guys doing for dinner?" Some of the kids go out and they have their time with their friends, which I yep. encourage. Yeah. Some of them. I left at home and then I spent some time with them on a more personal capacity. And that's when we get to sit down and have some real conversations. Mm. Even if it's no real conversation, you know, it's, it's all good. And then I finalize the day with making sure that everyone's home and that uh, mum's home as well. She's safe. No one's robbed her, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So like that's my Friday night. Mm. How, that's how Friday night finishes. And then I'll be doing social media stuff, doing then running my business, you know, and then doing 12 your, or 1 a.m. my work yeah. and then that finished my day. Right. And that happens right on Friday and like it goes from like 6.30 p.m. to like 12 a.m. Because <laughs> it hangs, right? Yeah. And so it kind of made me reflect a lot as well. So, And then obviously if there are other times where I do need to make certain occasions where I need to spend time with my clients or, or special events, you know, mm-hmm. with business functions and stuff, then I need yep. to go there. And other than that, I'll be at this youth ministry, which means that I have, I cannot serve my household anymore and that's when i realized wow maybe this is a young man's game where they're yeah, really exactly. not tethered to anything right i'm a young man i'm not married but i have boys that are hosts you have responsibility yeah i have responsibility yeah yeah so those are some of the things i'm thinking about as well mm. to some level of my arrogance i also had to think like hey i'm kind of intelligent i can build relationships pretty well but here i'm just moving chairs is this the best use of my gifts mm. to god or is this just part of the phase of them getting to know me? I understand that thought process isn't the most pure, mm. but it's something that is still registered with me. Yep. And you know what? I shared this with one of the boys yesterday after I came home. He right. was awake. He yep. wasn't a Christian. Is he? Oh, so he's not the one that goes to that you? No, no. No. Yep. But he's like, yeah, that's an interesting point. What do you say? Well, he seems to reflect and he, I think he appreciates me spending time with him because mm. he was actually home alone that night yeah, and right. really didn't have dinner by himself he just he just couldn't be stuffed he wasn't feeling particularly hungry mm. and he was just going to go to bed so yeah really it's really hard i think it's really hard the transition mm. there are so many things that you got to look at I, w- I wish i could just simplify it yeah mm. yeah. yeah it's not that easy <laughs> bottom bottom line bottom line it's not Church, that easy shopping. yeah uh, shopping Church, hopping and shopping, 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 which can inevitably turn to hopping, right? Like yeah. like I said, people do a bit of that. It's a dangerous thing, guys. I was going to say, man, like, yeah, what, what, you know, what if the kids mean isn't the way that you serve in that church? It's not like you're a failure for not doing it. It's not like you're, you know, a bad person. Yeah. But it's, I appreciate the fact that you're willing to push yourself out of your comfort zone. Yeah. I think that's a good thing to do. Well, I was kind of being lazy and not wanting to do this for a whole year. Yeah. That's why I've came before God and I said, hey, God, I need to do this mm. because you told me to do it because I want to serve you because I want to love your church. Mm. And so, yeah, here I am. But for those of you who are going through these things, be active. Don't let it sit on a shelf. It can. I realize it has impacts that go beyond just spiritual things as well. Mm. Yeah. From even a selfish point of view, like your wife could be there. Right, it, it impacts your course of life. Mm. You don't know how many people's lives you can actually touch. There's a lot. You make new friends who could be everlasting. Mm-hmm. So be active. Don't stop. Mm. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and it, it, it would take time, I think, for someone to find a church as well. Mm. You know, they say like the, you know, the average time to actually feel settled in a church is like six months to a year. Do, do they say that? Yeah. Yeah, man. Okay. So don't feel too bad, dude. Like, mm. It's actually like mm. six months to a year is generally for for most people. Sometimes it can take up to two years, mm. man. Mm. But the reality is like just thinking about like church is inherently different to like a soccer club 
or, you know, a chess club or, yeah. do you know what I mean by that? It's like there obviously it takes time before you, you start to feel part of those clubs. Yes. Yeah. But church is a bit different because it's a family. Mm. You know what I mean? You really invest in a lot of your time, energy, your life because you know that Jesus is your life. Yeah. And it takes time to actually settle into that. Yes. You know? Yes. It takes time because we're being more vulnerable and open with our family than we would at, you know, a soccer club. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So that can take time. Mm. That can take time to, to settle into it. So people who are, yeah, going through that period of finding a new church, I think need to hear that. Yeah. Because, yeah, you know, just being a bit open for me, like I'm kind of unsure where I sit at the moment. Mm. With the church I'm going to, mm. not for bad reasons. You know, it's a whole conversation about why I'm feeling this way. Mm. But I've had some really good chats with people, mm. which has been helpful. The most daunting thing for me is, I think, the fact of realis- realizing that it does take time mm. to settle into another church. Mm. But if you have made that step and you're keen on trying to find a new church, for whatever reason you have, just be aware that it can take time. That's right. Let's pray. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today's podcast. Thank you that um, you give churches to us that we can visit, that really this is a very luxurious discussion, that there are people that we remember who are living in violence because of their faith. Lord, just want to pray that for those of us who are going through times like D, times like myself, that you will continue to encourage them and add upon them the strength and the wisdom that they need to seek out a church that they can love and serve. Lord, I pray that you make these people humble. You make these people sacrificial and that whatever they need in terms of their spirit or their physical strength that you provide. Thank you, Jesus, for the fact that you are the ultimate church um, and under you, we are one or at least strive to be one at least anyway. We look forward to the return of your kingdom. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you next time. CCC. Follow us. Much love.